Welcome back, everyone, to the June 2018 0K1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic. We are in round three of this tournament. Going to start with a match between Paul Bello and Milan Rouge on Red Comet. So right now, Paul Bello and Milan Rouge are actually at the bottom of the ladder right now. They are... I should bear in mind, this is a top four setup. So you have a Swiss for four rounds, and then the top four player is going to move on to a single elimination bracket. Presumably, there'll be tiebreakers to decide fourth place at some point, but top four... Go into a Swiss, or sorry, go into a single limb, or at least a bracket. It might be a single, it might be a double. I think it's single. And then that'll decide the winner. So right now, Paul Bello and Milan Rouge need to win two more times to even have a chance to get up there. So whoever wins this has to win again in order to have a chance of getting into that top four. So it's going to be tricky for them, but I think they, they might be able to do it. At any rate, we are into the match. So Paul Bello going for... I'm going for here. So hard to control everything. Ah, there we go. Paul Bello going for the tank factory along with Milan Rouge. Both players going for tanks. Paul Bello... Okay, this is cheesy. This is cheesy as hell. Paul Bello going for a rush. Like, normally in this map where Milan Rouge is set up, that's normal. You have like the southwest, northeast. Occasionally people set up in the center. If someone goes southeast or northwest, they're trying to cheese you out and win in five minutes. That's what they're trying to do. This, And that's exactly what Paul Bello was trying to do. I don't know if they'll succeed, but hey, the Kodachi getting in here before Milan Rouge even gets one. That tells me something. That tells me that this is exactly what Paul Bello was trying to do. They don't want to even risk having to play the long game. They just want to get this push in, get this highly aggressive rush. I mean, they are setting up reasonably well, economically speaking, but they want this rush. Unfortunately for them, this Kodachi is forced to retreat and unable to really deal a whole lot of damage. Stopping a bit of the expansion, yes, but that's only going to go so far, and this Kodachi has to escape if it wants to live. Thankfully for it, of course, it does have auto repair. But no, get out of there! Paul, what are you doing? Get out of there! You're not... Uh. That thing is auto repair. Just get out of there. Let it heal up. Come back in later. That is auto repair. The welder does not. So, okay. I mean... When you're doing a rush like this, it is very important to make sure your micro-tactics are on point. I, I don't know if Paul Bell was actually distracted. They might have been looking elsewhere, and then the Kodachi went on its own. That does happen. I mean... One of the things about 0k is that units are kind of autonomous, so they will do things if it makes some tactical sense. That was one of the times where it kind of didn't, but... I mean, it wanted to fight. It wanted to attack something and deal some damage, and it did, and then it died. So, care is kind of important. Anyway, though, at the very least, this Kodachi should be able to get some extra damage and maybe get rid of this metal extractor. It looks like it is going for all three of them. Why is it stuck there? It should not be stuck there. It is going to have a hard time. There's, okay, one Kodachi here, that's... Being blocked off, this could actually will be able to get maybe another metal extractor if it doesn't burn itself to death first on its own fire. Get that metal extractor and run away or die. I mean, dying is, is a thing that happens too. At the very least, Paul Bello has managed to keep their economy ahead. Like, they've lost a couple Kodachis, sure. They lost 320 metal worth of Kodachis. But they have killed 212 metal worth of stuff, the metal extractors and metal extractors. But also, they've managed to keep Milan Rouge's economy a little bit weaker than it would otherwise be. So yeah, Paul Bello is actually doing a fine job just making sure everything is in a reasonably good position. If you look at their overall economic situation, they're 200 metal ahead. Uh, they actually are re reasonably ahead when it comes to economy. Their army value is lower, and now Milan Rouge going for the revenge. Not able to do a lot of damage, able to slow down the tank factory construction. Unable, unfortunately for them, not able to actually break any metal extractor, so Paul Bello is still ahead, 3 metal per second, and still doing fine with their base. While at the same time still harassing, getting those... Kodachi's still in there. Man, Milan Rouge must be frustrated right now. I got what, what can they do? They keep getting all these Kodachi's coming in here. They can't build this Blitz. I have one. That'll help. But still, they're behind economically. They're getting some reclaim here and there, but not only all that much. Paul Bello is continuously growing a static economy. Sure, they started in the southeast corner of the map, and as a result, it's very difficult for them to actually get safe expansions. They have to push quite a ways away from their factory in order to manage to find anything. But when you consider how much Paul Bello has kept Milan Rouge from expanding at all, that's worth it. This has worked out really well for them. It's not a sl it's not a small game or a short game by any means. It's only four, it's four minutes in, so I guess it isn't that long. But I do expect it'll take about ten minutes. I don't expect this will be over with the next rush or two. But at this point, Paul Bello is so far ahead economically that they can they can last that long. They can do fine, even if they have a bit of a hard time in the later game macro stages. They're so ahead right now, it's going to take a while for Milan Rouge to actually claw their way back in. So as long as Paul Bello keeps the pressure up, and they have the money to do that for free, like they can do that and still be fine. 
then Milan Rouge is not going to be able to contest Paul Bello's economic might. They're not going to be able to actually compete with the number of units Paul Bello builds, and that will give Paul Bello the game. Assuming, of course, that this does continue the way it is and Milan Rouge doesn't find a weak spot. There are a few naked expansions, quite a few naked expansions, actually, from Paul Bello, and Milan Rouge could and is going to find some of them. This Kodachi Blitz group going north is going to find a couple metal extractors. And it's also worth noting, Milan Rouge, yeah, they haven't expanded as much and they haven't built as much, but the forces they're sending are much larger. Uh, they're sending a larger group, they're sending a, a group that's going to have a much easier time just one-shotting everything it comes across. And so it's going to be it's going to be possible that it's actually going to deal a lot more damage than anything Paul Bello has done. Already getting rid of two metal extractors and a Blitz? Maybe a Blitz? Blitz surviving with less than one HP! Yes, there is floating point HP in this game. For those of you not familiar, that is a thing. 0 0.9 hit points. But with the ogre up there, Paul Bella was already prepared for this. They had that ogre built up already. They were they were working on that. Comes in at just the right time to stop Milan and Rouge from doing any more damage. And now Paul Bella with some reclaim on top of having half of the map to themselves thus far. Going for that revenge. Milan Rouge's commander is upgraded. It does have the heat ray. This code actually doesn't even care. It might want to care. Death is not fun. But, hey, gets rid of a metal extractor. That's still something. And the ogre should be able to deal additional damage. It looks like Paul Bell, Paul expects that Milan Rouge has actually expanded over to the top. Which they haven't. Milan Rouge is entirely focusing on the south side of the map. But Paul, unfortunately for them, going where their opponent isn't, wasting a bit of time, that could have been a commander kill. Uh, the ogre coming down here, that could have threatened the commander, pushed it back, possibly killed it, at least got rid of a couple metal extractors, maybe gotten rid of these units as well. But at the same time, this flank here does force Milan Rouge back. If they were planning to attack with this pair of Kodachis and pair of, two pair of Kodachi Blitz, they're not going to have that opportunity. Not without losing a bunch of units in the back line at any rate. They are going for it, though. But, no, the back line for Milan Rouge, that does take precedence. I don't have much confidence the Ogre is going to be stopped by this force, but, hey, valiant effort nonetheless. I mean, enough of them will manage to stop the Ogre. Enough Blitzes and Kodachis. That'll do the trick. But still, it's a question of whether or not it is enough. And I think the answer is no. Or maybe not, no, Ogre! The Ogre lodging a bit of a corner. Paul not controlling it at all, or putting on fight move. It's able to get out of there, but it's so heavily damaged that this actually could be a win for Milan Rouge. Or not win, but a, a defense, a successful defense for Milan Rouge. Again, though, all this is is Paul Bello expanding behind the attack. They're playing this perfectly. Do the harassment, expand behind the harassment, get more of an economy that way, and then your opponent has to deal with it. And Milan Rouge putting so much in their commander. This is possibly they hit for the commander. The, the ogre should die, but there's still more coming in. And even then, the commander is actually having a hard time killing the ogre. Heat ray is only really useful at close range. And at the same time, ogre coming around the back, taking on the factory. Paul Bello should be able to win. This factory going down, I think we're going to see Milan Rouge throw in the towel. I don't expect it to last any longer. The factory's down. The commander's still up. The commander is a fairly large investment, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And I think Milan Rouge is going to realize Paul Bello's got this. Like, really got this. But nope, they're going for another tank factory. They're rebuilding that, at least, which is... I mean, it's a, that's a choice. It's, it's tough for them right now. They're so far behind. Three, It's a threefold gap, really. The only thing is, right now, there's only 30 build power into this tank factory. Paul Bello hasn't been using their economy fully. They are accessing. But even then, Milan Rouge is way further behind than that. So it's going to take like a, about a minute and a half for them to rebuild this factory, and then it's going to take another minute or two to build an army. By that point, Paul Bello is going to have a large enough army. I think this is over. I mean, Milan Rouge does have a strong commander. They could theoretically hold off with that. And they do have some units already, so there's a possibility, but it's so faint just because of the fact that Paul Bell Paul's three times the economy. And they're not going to have something to work with it. I mean, they have 40 into the tank factory. They're building up a gunship plant. They should be fine for not accessing. Right, hopefully they will actually assist the gunship plant with either more caretakers or with the commander. And caretakers are indeed what's going to be built. But yeah, at the same time, this ogre coming in here, it'll go down. But it's dealt so much damage to a person, to a player that has no ability to build additional units. Not for the next 30 seconds. Milan Rouge is so desperately far behind right now. That I don't really know what they could possibly do to get back in this. Still, it's something. I mean, they can at least try some things here and there. I don't... Like I said, this this factory, it's it's almost done. It might manage to get in. It might manage to get a single unit, maybe. I don't know. Milan Rouge's commander is 
like I said, the only line of defense here, and I don't agree with the heat rays, but at the very least, it is a line of defense. If nothing else. So, with that, I think that's going to be Milliner's Commander taking a lot of damage. No shields left. There's the Ogre coming in with the Kodachi and Blitz. Milliner's Commander doing a f okay job actually holding things off, but again, I don't agree with the Heat Ray. I really don't. Not for a slow moving unit like that, because Heat Rays gain so much power from being close up, it does not make sense to have it on a slow moving commander. Or any commander, really. I think in a smaller map, it might make some sense, or if you're against a lot of. Like really short range units, maybe, but that usually doesn't happen because usually your opponents will build skirmishers. So yeah, really, Paul Bello, great cheese off Paul Bello. Just going in there, getting that early harassment of the Kodachis, and holding on to it. Like just keeping that harassment going. I didn't know if it would work, but it did, for the simple reason that they were able to expand behind it. And then Milan Rouge just did not have the economy. So Paul Bello turning that initial harassment not into an easy cheese win, just into a very strong economic base. And very good macro play without really a whole lot of trouble because their opponent simply could not build up to that same level. At this point, Milan Rouge does have like a faint bit of hope. They do have a few more metal extractors. They do have some reclaim. They do have the tank factory back up. In the meantime, though, Paul Bello has just continued to build loads of ogres. They've built up a lot of rapiers and locusts as well. Yeah, they're in a really good spot right now as far as actually building units goes. I mean, this multi-prong assault that Paul Bello is doing, they can easily they can easily stop anything that Milan Rouge is going to send to defend against this. I'm kind of surprised Milan Rouge has not surrendered. This is a tournament, so I'm not entirely surprised, because normally in a tournament you will try to hold on as long as you can. But it's just, there's not much you can do. There's not a whole lot that Milan Rouge really has going for them right now. And especially if their commander gonna go, that's going to go down soon. If their commander does go down, that is going to be it. If they don't surrender before their commander dies, they will after it does. I mean, all the units around here, yeah, Eric, this is a dead commander. This is going to be game. We should see the towel. We should see the GG right about now. Or not? Are they still going? They've got like five metal per second. They got nothing. I don't, it's, yeah, there it is. There's the GG. Okay, I was waiting for that. But yeah, nice, clever play from Paul Bello. Not sure if it would always work. I mean, the thing is, that is defensible. The answer would have been an earlier blitz coming out from Milan Rouge. That would have been the way to get rid of it. And even then, Paul Bello, they could have done that harassment better as well. But yeah, that is totally defensible. It's just, it wasn't defended. And Milan Rouge didn't go, wait a sec, I've really got to check for expansions. Because they had an opportunity to check for expansions. They actually, they had a bunch of blitzes and Kodachis over here in the mid-game. They could have gone from there and just pulled their way up, like gone through here, up and around. Like, check, is this set up? Because they know their opponent's main base is here. So they know that most of the defenses are over here. I'm a bit surprised they went and tried to assault it directly rather than checking first and then assaulting directly. Had they done that, Paul Bello probably would have lost most of the advantage they gained in that early game harassment phase. They didn't have the defenses set up. They still don't. So it's it would have been free. It just was never pushed. It was never attempted. So anyway, that is that. Going to be moving on to... I'm not sure what. I think there's still games going on here. So probably moving on to other games in this round but then again this game I and mean, wasn't that wasn't that long of a game but it was still kind of a long game in a map that it can have short games it can have long games what do we have left it looks like unlucky and 400 are done 400 won that orphelius won against major obvious ffc and raw is still going Ooh, that's potentially a long game that's potentially a very long game where is ah there it is you're going for 14 minutes now. Let's jump in. See what's happening. I expect it'll be this split down the middle macro grind that's going to last for half an hour. So I figure there's no real harm in coming in when I do. But yeah, it's probably going to be a long match. Red Comet has a tendency towards these macro grind matches, which we surprisingly didn't see. I am seriously surprised we didn't actually see it in the previous game. Okay, Tank versus Rover from FFC. Sorry, not Rover, from Shield from FFC. That's Shield versus Rover, my bad. Shield versus Rover. It's really hard to tell from the high up which one's Rover, which one's Tank. Anyway, Shield versus Rover from FFC. There's that split. FFC, actually a bit behind. Rar able to harass multiple fronts. Good use of the bandits coming in here. But at the same time, there should be some flanks coming in from FFC. They, do, they are playing Rovers. They can rush around with Scorchers, get around the side and deal some damage. But no, they're being very direct with Fencers instead. 
and doing an okay job with that. Right now, obviously winning slightly on the attrition, but this is a dead heat. Neither player really finding any advantage, and both players managing to get that stalemate position. FFC a little bit strong in the south. Raw a little bit strong in the north. Actually, no, FFC managing to take the north as well. This could be a problem. Would you please respond, you stupid camera? Anyway, FFC is able to take quite a lot of the map. In fact, Raw losing the southeast pretty convincingly. FFC looks to be in a strong position. Raw is only about a third of the map to their name. The rest of it going to FFC, and FFC now twice the economy is raw. This could be it. Wow, no, the game really is just getting slow on the response to the input. Okay. It's not even camera, the keyboard there. Whatever. At this point, though, it looks like RAR is going to lose his FFC already on RAR's base 40 minutes into the game. Went from an even match to just a fencer push, leading likely to a win. RAR so far behind, losing their entire main base. The Dante in the main base. Dante, 40 minutes in. That's just how strong FFC's economy was. That's not entirely unusual, but still. For what it is, getting the damage it has, RAR throwing in the towel right as we manage to catch up to the game. RAR throws in the towel. And that is that. FFC winning with the Rover plan. We were thinking that the Rovers are no longer powerful. No, FFC showing it's wrong. Good fencer pushes. Good safe fence pushes with a bit of scorcher harassment. Slowly but surely grinding out a win. Well, slowly as well as determined. 40 minutes, but still. Grinding out a win that way into the Striders. Scorpion and Dante. Yeah, it's pretty textbook, but hey, fencers, I think, might be a little bit underrated. Or might have been a little underrated. I think FFC knew exactly how well rated they were. But that was all that was, really. Or largely what that was. So that is round three. That is round three. And we're going to be moving on to round four. And round four, ooh, we have Rar and Orphilius. Those are, I believe, the current strongest players. Although FC just beat Rar. No, Rar and 400. Sorry, FC and 400 are the best right now. But not against each other. In fact, I'm a little concerned because looking at the way this is laid out, if FFC if FFC wins their top, or Philly is an unlucky, we could have like a four-way 2-2 two -two tie. In fact, what is it? 400 versus Major Obvious. Major Obvious wins, that's two 2-2s. Two if 400 wins, that's a 3-0, -oh, or 3-1. We have Rar and Orphelius. One of them is going to be 3-1, one. one's going to be 2-2. Two -two. We have FSC and Paul Bello. FSC wins. That's four rows. So that'll make a difference. Unlucky versus Milan and Rouge. If unlucky wins. That's two two. So we're gonna have a we're gonna have a tie. We're gonna have a two two tie. At least one pair of players that are two and two. They need to have a tiebreaker match played for after this round four. So bear that in mind. Anyway, for the next couple minutes, we're gonna have a short break, and then we'll be back with round four after that short break. Stay tuned. 